Hey guys, um, Derek's here with me. And I just wanted to jump on here and say, first of all, thank you. I'm very shocked at how many people have reached out to me uh, and said, and sent their condolences or whatever, or said, you know, stay strong, whatever. Like, really what I'm hurt most about is I feel like all my friends were in a car crash or something. Like, I was, you know, really good friends with these women for years, and they were my heart and soul. We were in a group text where we texted almost every day. Um, we prayed for each other when one of us had a problem, when Jansen was in the hospital, or Lynn was going through it with Brittany, or Tatum was having issues with her family. Like, you know, Derek can be my witness. It's like, they they were my everything and i think that when you lose that many people at once it's really hard but i might have screwed up in my life before but the one thing that i have not screwed up was my friendship with them like i gave every ounce of my being to these women every single piece of me and and i'm in no way comparing what happened to Brittany for 13 years and being put in places against her will to what happened to me. All I'm saying, cause some people have said that all I'm saying is I, I kind of know what it feels like because Jansen and Lynn did the same thing to Brittany and yeah, I defended them. I was like, well, maybe there's, you know, there's gotta be something different cause these women are so amazing. Right? So, that night in Louisiana, we had gone down there to throw Jansen a birthday party. It was going to be her birthday weekend, and we spent $4,000 to go down there and to for decorations and balloons and cake. And Derek worked for months on this birthday video for her where Big Rob, Brittany Security, and Felicia, and Lynn, and Laurelyn, and Courtney, and everybody was in this video that we did for Jansen. I mean, we just worked so hard to give her an amazing party. And also Jessica from House and Habit and her photographer, I invited them down there to try to get them to see a different side of, of these people in hopes that she would not write another article like the one she had done before. And they were very angry with Jessica. They did not want anything to do with her. And I was like, before. And they were very angry with Jessica. They did not want anything to do with her. And I was like, no, I think we can work this out. And I really did. I hope all of you know, like I did try my best. I was just trying to think any way possible to get, I just, I hate, and I'm sure all of you that, that love Brittany and grew up with her and, and she's inspired all of us in so many ways. Like it kills all of us that to see the way things have gone, no matter who's to blame, like it is what it is at this point. And I just wish I could see her back in Louisiana, riding around with her girlfriends in her convertible, that's still in her garage at Serenity, her little Lexus convertible, or hanging out with her mom and making cookies and on Christmas Eve with her boys and her mom at Serenity. That's what I wanted. And I think probably all of you Eve with her boys and her mom at Serenity. That's what I wanted. And I think probably all of y'all want that too. Um, is just to see her happy again. Everything else would fall into place if we just saw her happy again. Anyway, so I'm not going to tell the whole story as to what happened at Jansen's that night. But for me, it felt like the sinking of the Titanic. Like it was watching a slow motion car wreck. Jessica from House and Habit was there, um, and she heard a lot of what went down. And, I mean, in one night, and I and for a long time I was like, did I do something wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? I answered a question honestly. I asked some things I shouldn't have, and I guess, guess you're not allowed to talk about being gay or whatever, I don't know, but I'm not ready to say what all happened. Um, but Jansen's husband threatened to beat me up. 
and pretty much chased me <laughs> out of the house. And it was, I think it was all threatened to beat me up and pretty much chased me <laughs> out of the house. And it was, I think it was all a setup. I think that her husband felt like me and Jansen were getting too close. Tatum, definitely. And I always thought Tatum was such a good friend. Like, me and her were thick as thieves. You know what I'm saying? And, nope, Tatum was so desperate to get in good with Chance, and she was ready to throw me under the bus real quick. And then showed up two days later in New Orleans at the park with Jessica from House and Habit. And I'm like, why is Tatum here? Why wouldn't she have told me she's coming here? And Tatum was sent by Lynn and Jansen to smooth everything over with me so I wouldn't tell everybody what had gone down because they have businesses and stuff. They didn't want everybody to know what happened. And anyway. So after that night, do you think, you know, the mustard seeds, Lynn's friends told me that Lynn was calling everybody the next day gossiping and like, y'all, did y'all hear what happened with Jacob at Jansen's last night? Did y'all hear what went down? Did Lynn call me and say, hey, I'm sorry that all that happened. I know you and Jansen are best friends. Like, what can we do to fix it? You think Tatum was trying to fix it? Nope. They were like, okay, good. Him and Jansen aren't friends anymore. Jansen wouldn't even talk to me ever again, she sent me a text saying, I don't know, that I play the victim and, I mean, I was a victim in your home, your, thre your husband threatened to whoop my ass and over me being gay. So how am I, so how am I supposed to feel, Jansen? How was I supposed to feel? You're such a godly woman and you go to church every Sunday and you preach to me all the time. We don't treat people that way, Jacob. She's been so hard on me for years about how we treat people with respect. And, and I'm not saying that Jansen doesn't like gay people, but she sure as hell was ready because she didn't want to apologize. Her and her husband, they didn't want to apologize. They're too good for that. You know, they're too cool for that. And I would have apologized. I thought we would hug it out the next day. But no, Lynn, Tatum, they they were like, oh, this is awesome. We'll just not talk to him anymore. He's done. He's out. He said one wrong thing or he answered a question the wrong way. He's out. We'll never talk to him again. Okay. So long story short, the next day, I was asking all the people that were flying in uh, for Jansen's birthday that we were throwing her, what are we supposed to do? Do we go home? Like, what do we do? And they called Craig and asked him, and he said, tell Jacob Diamond to get the fuck out of my town and don't come back. The last I ever heard from him. Then Lynn starts texting me and blaming me for stuff that she knows I didn't do that actually Bailey does all the time. And Tatum, oh, well, there's just too much negativity. I can't talk to you anymore. So six years of friendship down the drain with all of these people because of what? So imagine how hurtful that is. Anyway, moving on, a lot of y'all are messaging me and... I've gotten several phone calls today from people who have had huge problems with Bailey and Tatum, and I never knew any of this. Like, I didn't know that Tatum and Bailey had all these problems with Rodan and Fields people that they've bullied or tried to run off to get them away from Lynn. I didn't know all that was happening. I knew Bailey didn't like me because she didn't want me anywhere near the group because she's very insecure about somebody, I guess, stealing her spot. I just don't know why we can't, we couldn't have all been friends, but I mean, Bailey was doing so many things behind Brittany's back and Lynn's back. Like, why are you calling and texting Brittany? She's had enough problems. Like, why are you doing that, Bailey? Why Lynn didn't throw her ass to the curb then, I don't know. We all were like, holy shit.